Are you in a relationship and you have communication issues? Well, this week on Motivation and Confidence, we're going to talk about one thing that you can do to improve the communication in your relationship. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in to Motivation and Confidence. I'm your host, Tom Danger, where we help you do your daily best. Now, I have been in a relationship, partnership, friendship, business situation for over 30 years. Um, met my wife <laughs> in Harlem one day um, while hanging out with my homeboys. Uh, going to a carnival when I was a kid and uh, I put my Mac down once I put my Mac down you know she wasn't able to shake me I got the number and it's been history since it's been a hell of a roller coaster we've had good days bad days we've had problems in our marriage I guess as I can't even speak for any other marriage we have had problems in our marriage in our marriage that we've had to work on to put work in to improve our communication and it hasn't been easy there was a point in time where I would literally just break shit punch the wall scream yell because I felt as if I wasn't heard. I wanted to communicate my emotions, but I ain't know how to put it in words. And sad but true, it took me 40 years, 40 plus years to learn how to communicate for myself, not even for my wife, for me to learn how to express my emotions to find the right words to express myself. And I think most of it comes from growing up and part of it is like getting your ass beat or, or, or getting spankings or discipline, whatever you want to call it. So it's sort of like you do something wrong or I would do something wrong and then you get a whipping and then after you get the whipping Moms look at you and be like, why are you crying? Ooh, why the fuck you think I'm crying? It hurt. Like, <laughs> right? So I'm not supposed to even express the pain. So you build up this tolerance of pain and non-emotion and how to deal with shit. So now you become an adult and through your whole childhood, you've been suppressing, you know, pain and, 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 and fear and all this other stuff because when you get spankings, like, you become fearful of your parent. You, you become fearful of doing something wrong because you don't want to get that level of discipline that you've once received. Like, I've gotten beaten, you know, butt naked with a belt until my mama broke a sweat. Or, you know, my grandmother beat me with like a, a stick because I said something out of line. Like, I really got my ass kicked as a kid by my loved ones. Love my family to death. I'm pretty sure the actions that they were taking on me, I know that they told me stories of, like my grandmother would tell me when she was uh, disciplined as a child, her mother would beat her with a switch and then go and make her sit in a tub full of uh, hot water, right? And when you think about, th that ain't nothing but some slave shit. That's just how they treated slaves and how we think that we're supposed to discipline our kids. So it's something that's been passed down from generation to generation. Before I go off on a tangent, so when it came to disciplining our children, which we have four, my oldest son, I sort of gave him a little bit of that slave bullshit, right? I would pluck him upside his head and do all type of wrong shit because my granddad, when I was a kid, if I did something wrong, he would pluck me upside my head. And getting a pluck in your head, I don't know, like, that shit hurt. Like, it just sends chills through your bodies. Like, it must do something to your nerve in this. But my granddad was a construction worker. And he had, he was strong. But his fingernails felt like they were made from metal or, or oak wood or something. So when he plucked you upside your head, like, it just 
vibrated throughout your body. But all of these things, you get beat, you get disciplined, you better not cry. If you do cry, I'm going to whip you again. So now you're suppressing all your emotions. And then when you try to express yourself, you're afraid of saying something that's going to make them upset. So now you just don't say anything. So fast forward, now you become an adult. And you're sitting across from another individual. You're in a relationship. And you want to tell them like something's bothering you, but throughout your whole life, you've never been able to communicate what's wrong with you or why you feel the way that you feel because you've always been whipped to be disciplined. And after that discipline, you better not express yourself because if you express yourself or talk back to me, I'm going to bust your ass again. Now, we could spin it and, and, and then you talk about the divorce and, and, and parents being separated and not seeing love in a household. And then you get into a relationship and you're like, well, damn, how am I supposed to do this? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base my relationship on what I seen growing up. And the little bit that I did see growing up wasn't from my mom and dad. It was from my grandmother and grandfather. So they had the most stable relationship. You know, and, and keeping it a buck, you know, grandpa, you know, he had his his side chick for a minute. So then you you start thinking, well, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do. You take care of home. You're supposed to have a side chick. You do this and this as long as you don't bring it home. Like you start believing this shit. So then you bring more bad habits into the relationship instead of telling your lady what you actually need, because all that you're doing is. Telling another person what the need is instead of telling your partner what the need is. And that outside person seems easier to talk to because they're not the ones that's in the fire with you. They're just the temporary ones. So they, they're sort of like the therapist, right? You only spend an hour with them, if that. <clears throat> you spend an hour with them doing what you're going to do, but they're not there with you the other 23 hours to really go through when you're tired, when the meal ain't cooked, when the money is short and all that. they just there for that temporary self-serving fixed by that other individual as well but it all of this takes away from your ability to communicate now when you look at your partner or spouse you may say like you you have to look at what they've gone through you don't know whether or not their level of disciplining was one way you don't know if there were abuse when they were younger to where they're fearful to express themselves there's so many things that we have to deal with but we know that we don't want to grow up similarly we don't want our situation to 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 necessarily mirror what our parents had so we try to create this home structure but it's it's broken right it's it's broken before we even get started because we haven't done the work for ourselves to be whole, to know what it is to give ourselves love. What we do is we look at giving other people that love and making ourselves feel good. But that's just, again, it's a temporary fix to something that's internally broken. Because if you can't really love yourself, it's hard for you to love another individual. And even the temporary love that you give is just that. It's temporary. So you have to take a deep look at yourself and say, what's wrong with me? Or just admit that you have some baggage or some shit that you need to work on and get to work on that. How did I do that? Several years of therapy, right? Therapy was a good starting point. Yes, prayer, very good. Have a, have a spiritual connection with whoever your higher person is, being is, creator is, right? Journaling, do all that, you know, writing down your thoughts. But the one thing that has helped us most in improving our communication is emotional intelligence personality assessments looking at from a behavioral standpoint why we respond to the things that we respond to and having those words to express ourselves and why we feel so so why is it that I'm non-confrontational 
Why is it that you're, you're a perfectionist? Why is it that you prefer to be more supportive than to be the outgoing person? Figuring out where your strengths and weaknesses are and then looking at it and saying like, oh, wow, I never realized that my partner doesn't like confrontation. But I'm trying to push her into confrontation because I'm an outgoing and speaking person and I just like to speak in emotion. They don't want to speak in emotion. They like to internalize. So you have to learn those particular personality traits so that you know what you're dealing with. But first you have to look at yourself. Because if you don't even know what triggers you have, what could tick you off, or what makes you feel good and what doesn't make you feel good, you can't really move on to another person and expect for them to do it. And on top of that, you have to let people go at their own pace. So you may be eager, yeah, Tommy, this is dope. I know you've talked about this before. Yes, disc assessment. If you're interested, TomDanger.com. Hit the uh, contact form. You know what I'm saying? I work with you. Or if you want to work with um, another company, go for it. I just want you to do your personal best. But you can't expect for another person to move at the same pace that you're at just because you're excited about your self journey. You also have to learn how to respect the pace of another person. And in relationships, I see a lot of y'all, and, and I don't even talk about this, but a lot of time I see women right now, yes, you're doing your thing, you're getting your bag, you're on your own. And if the man isn't on at that same pace as you, now all of a sudden you're pushing him to the side of you, making him feel less than. No. We have to support each other at our own pace in our own journeys. We can't just look at the end destination. Are we supportive of each other? Man, I'm on a soapbox this week. Motivation and confidence where we help you do 